Leleo Taclea Direct Kiku, a care guide. Well, a care guide as from the point of view of Southern Spain care guide. There will be other care guides from Tropical Plants Finland and from Honeybees and Orchids. And I will link their channels in the description below. Because what is going on here is that when I was doing a tour of my south side blooming alley, Tropical Plants Finland mentioned that she had a gyrat kiku. And I'm like, oh, cool. How about we do a care guide of what we do in our environment, in our climate, how do we grow them, and post the videos on the same day. So, yeah, that's what we're doing today. In that comment thread, Honeybees and Orchids said, I have a gyrat kiku. And I'm like, well, guess what? How about you do a video of what you do, how you care for it in your environment? So the links to their channels will be in the description below. And when I see their videos come up, I will add those videos in the description and replace it with the general links. But first of all, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for coming, having a look-see about my non-blooming Gyrat Kiku. The pictures were from last year. This year I had one bud to show for on a growth and that even that got broken off. It wasn't me this time. Some kind of my night gecko, my night pest control was out doing his rounds and broke off the bud, I guess, I don't know. But it wasn't exactly something I was pleased with because this orchid, as you saw, blooms quite nicely. The blooms are not fragrant, but this year I've had two growths coming and this growth here with the bloom stalk just dried up. And this one, well, it didn't bloom for me because of my night pest control troop. But what I do, in the southern part of Spain is try not to get the night temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius because of how I grow this. I have it in my favorite setup of just Leca in a self-watering pot. And because of that method, there is more evaporative cooling going on in the pot, which cools down the roots maybe too much for my liking if I go below 15 degrees Celsius, even though the orchid can handle a lower temperature. She is intermediate to warm growing, but if it wasn't for this grow method, I could leave the orchid out much longer with lower temperatures. Just to be on the safe side, I err on the side of caution, bring her in at 15 degrees Celsius. That's for about three months, maybe four of the year, she lives inside under my blurple light, seeing as, you know, she's not growing. I would like to encourage growth during the winter, but she gets the blurple lights. And also my blurple lights and my shop lights don't differentiate either way. It's based on the size of the pot and what can I fit in where. So that has nothing to do with blurple or full spectrum. It's just she fits under the blurple lights. I'm not targeting her specifically to grow during the winter. It would be nice based on the lights, but you know, if she decides to take a rest, let her take a rest. And based on the fact she is not growing in the reservoir right now, all I have is just RO water. I flush her once a week, even in winter. And during the summer, I flush her every single time the reservoir is almost dry or has gone dry. So before I put even new fertilizer in, I flush the pot through and then set her in back into her mask with fresh fertilized concoction in the reservoir, which in my case is about 300 parts per million and at a pH of 5.8. And the reason I say it like that is because my leka will soak at a pH of eight. So in order for all the nutrients to be absorbed by my orchid, I have to put the pH way down to about 5.8 so that in the wicking effect, the pH goes up and up 
and then there is a distribution of nutrient uptake in the orchid while the wicking effect is balancing out my low pH. That's the plan anyway, and it's working very well for me. In uh, the summer, I have her in the south side where there is super bright indirect sun. And you can see that based on the color of the leaves. This is not direct sun at all. So bright, bright shade, I would say, is what she's getting. And of course, it gets extremely hot. Anything above 35 degrees Celsius is the norm in my summers for about two or three months of the year. And hence, I was a little bit disappointed to only get one bud out of her this year. And on top of that, you know, I couldn't even get that bud to bloom based on night activities. Other than that, this orchid is, should be a very, very active grower. There shouldn't be any issues. I don't find it a difficult one to grow. I love the upright growing habit. I do have it trained a little bit right now because it is winter. I need, I don't want the space of the leaves to take up from what's coming next to it. I like to keep it a little bit contained, but pretty much it is just an upright grower. And depending on the angle of the sun or the light, you know, some of the growths might lean in or away, but that is very, very rare. I have her only trained because of what's left or right of her. And when I take her out of the shelf, I don't want these leaves to catch. I don't have a fragrance on my blooms, none that I could detect. So it'll be interesting to see what tropical plants Finland and honeybees and orchids have to say about the fragrance of theirs. Maybe in their climate, there is a fragrance. I would have thought there was a fragrance because of the Brassavola parentage, but I don't have one. Needless to say, I just want to wrap this up really quickly and invite anybody who sees an orchid in my collection that they also grow to get in touch with me in the comments below and say when, whenever it shows up, not today or, but in any kind of videos, if you see an orchid in the background, say, I grow that. And if you do make videos, please let me know because it would be great to have this kind of a series. You know, if I do a care video, I would like to do post on the same day with somebody else who's growing the same orchid. And that would be, in my opinion, a, a great way to say, yeah, I grow it this way, but today the care video includes this channel, this channel, and this channel because they are in a different environment, a different climate, and maybe they grow closer to what is the climate that you're looking for. I don't know if that makes sense. If I watch a video, for example, and I say, and I'm there, I'm, I'm watching somebody else's collection. I'm like, oh, I've got that. Then of course I listen to how they take care of it. And then I apply it to my circumstances. Does it fit? Doesn't it fit? And I take on board snippets and nuggets that work for me. But I would like to make an open invite. If you have an orchid, the same as I've got, regardless of where you are in the world, why don't we do a care video, whether we've got blooms or not, somewhere we might have pictures, and if we don't have pictures, that doesn't matter either. It'd be just nice to have a little chit chat about the same orchid in a different environment in the world. And we post the videos on the same day. I hope that you take me up on that offer because I'm just always so curious about somebody else who grows the same orchid as me <laughs> and how they do it and why they do it this way. So my why I do it this way because I grow inorganic. I don't want to use any organic media. For me, it's also a cost factor. I don't have to keep buying in new organic media when it comes to repots. I can recycle everything. Also, the orchid in my climate is extremely, extremely thirsty, and it makes it much easier for me to keep up with her watering and fertilizing needs to use this method and also because I have extremely low and non-existent humidity for the orchids that I grow. So having a lot of the pots next to each other in the summer and having this grow method that absorbs a lot of water and is very moisture retentive, it helps me a lot with my humidity requirements, the ones that nature won't give me. Basically, those are my reasons for growing in this method. 
I find it absolutely, it's clean, it's efficient, it works for me. I can reuse the media and I don't have to buy in a lot, a lot of stuff in order to repot. And with that being said, I hope that you hit me up when you see an orchid that you are growing and let's do a video. It doesn't always have to be this long, but those are kind of the principles. You got the temperatures and you know, let me know if there is an orchid. Let's do a video about it together. Let's post on the same day and let's put links into the description and get everybody somewhat involved with regards to their growing methods in their environment. Personally, I would love it and I'm just putting it out there. So thank you ever, ever so much. I hope that you enjoyed this different way of doing a care guide in cahoots with other channels. I look forward to hearing your opinion. I look forward to seeing you say, I've got this orchid, can we do a video? And all that good and fun stuff. Have a wonderful day. Please stay safe. Take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.